Greetings and thanks for dropping by for the latest edition of Mentor Mike's Market Movie. Today is Friday, August 31st, 2012. Boy, where did this year go? Ready to start September. And of course, this is the Labor Day weekend, so everybody enjoy your weekend. Relax, be safe, uh, enjoy your time off. And uh, as you can see, we have our chart all set up for the replay. But first, as usual, let's take a look at uh, this week's charts all together. Here is my three-minute S&P E-mini chart from Monday, August the 27th. I was using a variation on one of my chart templates where in lieu of the red moving average, I uh, made uh, the parabolic red. So uh, we have uh, red, white, and blue momentum modules. Uh, the upside to this is that it kind of uh, unclutters the chart a little bit because you have one less uh, batch of lines on the chart. But unfortunately, um, I don't really like it. I think that uh, we lose a little uh, bit of uh, detail when we uh, eliminate the red moving average. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be using this too much. Anyhow, let's take a look at what went on. We had a long trade in the pre-market, uh, a red, white, and blue alignment. Then we went short when the big red parabolic flipped here. We also had the MACD giving a bearish crossover, and we had our stochastic uh, going south of the 50% level. So we had a, a triple alignment of bearish signals, and it looked like it was going to be a transitional move, but uh, the justification here was some divergence uh, between price and the stochastic. So we went ahead and went short here and hit our targets uh, about this point here. Then our first projected delta low was pretty much right on time here. And uh, as you can see, our stochastic is uh, um, changing its parabolic from bearish to bullish. And we also had what is arguably a one, two, three bottom. So once again, when the uh, large parabolic uh, flipped, you'll notice that we also had our red, white, and blue alignment. Uh, we had the cross on the MACD, and we had the stochastic once again going above 50%. So it was all very straightforward. Went long and uh, got out of that trade when the parabolic flipped yet again. And... Uh, in determining whether we should uh, short the market, uh, I saw that we had, uh, eventually we had a one, two, three top here. Um, the MACD was a little bit uh, hard to read at first, and we were kind of clinging to the trend-defining moving average there. Uh, so it wasn't until past this number three point that it looked like we were gonna kind of break to the downside. So even though, uh, the stochastic uh, went south of the 50% level way over here about the same time as the parabolic flipped. Um, I didn't get short until I saw that the market was really going to break to the downside, and that was due to this little hump and the bearish turnaround on the stochastic right there. Um, then we had one last little bump up to the now downtrending green moving average. So when our parabolic flipped for the last time, we got short, and it was a pretty straightforward day, low, high, low. Uh, okay, Tuesday was the 28th, and uh, in the pre-market, we had a with the trend short trade here, and then we had a one, two, three bottom, and I went long, because as you can see right here, uh, we got our red, white, and blue bullish alignment. So the price shot up and hit my first target. I don't believe it hit the second. Um, but then it promptly turned right around and came back down, made a new low. Um, and then turned around and I got long. And I got long ostensibly because of this one, two, three. Uh, the one, two, three bottom was actually for this trade here, the first one. Um, and there was actually divergence uh, to justify the second entry. We had a low here and a lower low on the price, and we had a higher low on both MACD and stochastic. For some reason, 
Uh, I neglected to mark the divergence here, uh, but you can clearly see that it's there. So got long again and uh, hit all our targets, I think, uh, and that's why we got out before the flip of the parabolic. And then you'll notice that I got long with the blue and white underneath the red somewhat. But if you look, you'll see that we had red, white, and blue alignment on the MACD and pretty much on the stochastic as well because the um, faster stochastic did not really seriously break below the 50% level and we were starting to turn to the upside and looked like we were crossing the, uh, the white line of the longer stochastic. So I got uh, long there and it all worked out okay. And then uh, we got a one, two, three top, uh, which justified this short trade. We hit uh, some uh, support here with the trend defining moving average and uh, thus went long. And we then had one more short trade based on the divergence that you can see here. So this was kind of a very sideways choppy market, but if you kind of break it down into uh, its constituent parts, you can see that the signals were fairly clear for the trades that we ended up taking. Okay, now this is um, the 29th and missed this initial trade here. This was actually a with the trend short trade. Didn't go very far, uh, but it would, have, it would have hit the first target, so uh, it could have been a good trade. And there was a one, two, three bottom formation here. The one is off the chart, and that justified this long transitional move. Then we had a one, two, three top, which uh, uh, justified this short move. And actually, you'll see there's another zigzag here. So I actually had the one, two, three mark there, and that's why I got in at this point. Um, the, the price came down, hit my first target but did not fill it and then came back up and eventually sold off and we were okay. But then I realized that the one, two, three was there, but it was actually uh, the larger version than the one that I was looking at. Um, now, as far as getting long after our low here, I honestly don't think there's any divergence or a one, two, three that we can really hang our hat on until maybe uh, this little zigzag here, you could say one, two, three, maybe. But I just knew that this thing was going to go up because this had to be our initial low. Uh, I, the other, the previous day ended on a high, so we knew our first turning point was going to be a low. And uh, it's a little bit late compared to the predicted time, but not that much. And of all the the delta turning points, the first one tends to be the most reliable. So. I knew this thing was going to go up. There had to be at least one other turning point in the day, and if this was a low, that had to be a high. So it wasn't a big stretch to uh, to get long. And I did that when the uh, stochastic went above the 50% level, and that's also when the uh, faster MACD goes above uh, the zero line, and uh, the price is going above the red and the trend-defining moving average and flipping the parabolic. So all of that was happening at once. By the way, as you can probably see on this configuration of my chaos uh, chart template, we have two speeds of MACD. Um, the zero line is marked with the, the dashed green, and that is really relevant to the larger uh, histogram uh, the outline of which is marked in red. And you can see that that is mimicking the configuration of our red moving average. Notice that the red moving average crosses the trend defining moving average at pretty much the same point as where this red um, outline of the histogram crosses the zero line. However, with respect to the faster MACD, the zero line should really be uh, the red moving average. But since I already had this line in red, um, I didn't want to have that one as well. I thought about putting it as a dash line, but red uh, to kind of uh, show that it was doing double duty, but that could be a little confusing. So uh, the zero line is red with respect to our gold and, and steel blue faster MACD, 
but it's uh, it's the dotted green with respect to the longer term histogram outlined in red. So in case you were wondering about that, now uh, where are the um, market topped out and flipped? We we have a perfect red, white, and blue alignment. The parabolic's getting bearish, um, and you can see the faster MACD goes south of the zero line right at the pinnacle of the longer term histogram and our stochastic went south of the 50 percent level at the same point so this was a great signal the reason this is uh, marked in yellow is because I wasn't actually there to take this trade I had to uh, run an errand this day but I certainly would have taken this one had I been there so the green ones are the real trades the yellow ones are the ones that uh, got away so to speak so this was a, a two turning point day low and high okay and let's see this is Thursday I guess uh, we had uh, a one two three bottom uh, prior to uh, my getting up and this in the in the pre-market we had uh, a possible uh, transitional move here it didn't go very far but I think it would have been far enough to hit the uh, initial target so it would have been a good trade and then uh, we resumed the trend as the parabolic flipped here and I did catch this one and go short um, and you'll notice that um, we've got the price going south of the red moving average we've got the uh, cross on the MACD and we've got the um, stochastic going south of its 50 percent level after it's flipped its own parabolic so uh, definitely some stuff going on here I was stopped out uh, before hitting I think the second target but got an opportunity to get short again very quickly unfortunately again I had something that I was doing uh, that caused me to miss that trade but it clearly would have been one I would have taken had I been there and that one I think would have probably hit all three targets so it's a pity I didn't see it um, now this one again I don't think there's really any justification here I don't think there's any divergence or the one two three as you can see comes later but again I knew this was bound to uh, to go up because again this was had to be our initial low and if we have a low there's got to be a high so this thing was gonna take off to the upside and, and uh, and sure enough, we didn't have long to wait. Um, we did have a one, two, three, which justified this. Now, I wasn't sure what was going on here, so I went short because it looked like we were going to kind of resume uh, perhaps the down move since we had a very decided slope uh, on the trend defining moving average. And uh, thanks to this drop here, uh, we hit the first target, but that was pretty much it. It turned right around and uh, when I saw that this thing wasn't really going to go south and, and I looked and, and saw that uh, the uh, histogram on the long-term MACD didn't waver, it was still climbing and uh, over here it at first looked like the stochastic was going to go south at the 50 percent level but it didn't, it turned around and went up and so uh, as soon as we flipped the parabolic here I reversed and, and went long and uh, rode that up to where we were stopped out here and uh, got one additional short trade out of it based on uh, a little bit of divergence here and with the stochastic and as you can see it dropped rather nicely by the end of the day okay and this is today's chart and this is the the day that we're going to replay there it's not particularly outstanding but none of the days really were so We'll make it easier on ourselves and and uh, do the one that's already queued up. So, missed uh, an opportunity to take this long trade this morning. Um, definitely a nice with the trend move. Uh, but thereafter, uh, I did go short, and we had a one, two, three top, and we also had some divergence from this high to this high, and then a lower high on the stochastic. So, caught this. Uh, wrote it down and then um, at this point we got in because we had a red white and blue alignment uh, above the upsloping trend defining moving average so this is a with the trend trade and it looked like uh, arguably we had a one two three top which justified our 
uh, going here. Now we actually had the one, two, uh, we actually had the red, white, and blue uh, alignment on this short trade, but uh, that that begs the question of the, that it was also a, uh, a transitional move. So we needed some justification here. One, two, three provides that. And then once I was stopped out here, um, it looked like we were going to have another transitional move back in the other direction. Uh, and we had some divergence here uh, with both MACD and the stochastic. So it went long. And there was a couple more potential trades here, but in real life I, I had stopped after this one. So maybe on the replay we'll see if we can uh, catch these and trade all the way to the end of the day. Um, and then last but not least, here is my version of our high-low turning points on a daily basis. Uh, this is last Friday, way over here on the left. The vertical green line here uh, marks the start of the new week. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and here's Friday. Now you'll notice that with the exception of today, Friday, each of our turning points, the high-low uh, delta points, um, has its own little momentum module carved out by the parabolic um, using the parameters I have on this five minute chart. Now, it was like that uh, going back to last week and all during this week up until today. And we ended up with a couple of extra zigzags. One at the beginning, this high and this low, and then up to a higher high, down to the lowest low, up to another high. And then at the end of the day, we had another quick set of zigzags. Well, you can't have that many delta turning points in a single day. That would have been, what, uh, seven? No, that doesn't work. So occasionally, you'll get these extra little AB zigzags, they call them. Um, so I simply marked the highest high, the lowest low, and then the next highest high. Uh, which are the ones shown here. And uh, these um, kind of spoiled our, our nice uh, perfect symmetry for the week, but that just goes to show you how unpredictable the market uh, can always be. All right, so let's get these out of the way. And I think we're all lined up and ready to start our replay. So let me bring my little always on top dashboard out here and we'll get started okay we've got a slightly upsloping trend defining moving average the dash green um, bullish red white and blue bullish parabolic so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled to see if we're going to get either a, a new trend to the downside or an opportunity to jump on board here. Um, we could drop down to a lower time frame and see if the signals are any easier to spot, but let's just stay put for a bit and see what transpires. I've got my arrow poised on the pause button here in case something materializes. We're kind of consolidating sideways, which suggests that this is a uh, kind of a, a, a correction of some sort. And if this thing is going to break to the upside, there's a good chance that that won't happen until the price gets relatively close to the red moving average and maybe even touches it here. Starting to touch it now. Let's see if we get anything that resembles a a turnaround on the MACD and the and the stochastic. Yeah, we're starting to. Okay, I'm going to pause it right here. Now, we don't, we we still have a ways to go for a crossover, uh, but we've got the stochastic touching the white, ready to kind of break to the upside, and we've pushed our upper donching channel up a notch here and we just pushed it up a notch again so um, I think that there's a good chance that this thing will at least hit our first target so let's go ahead and get long 
And by the way, um, I had a few of you kind of complaining about the 150 contracts, saying that it just seemed too uh, unlikely and, and, and um, something that you couldn't do. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way because uh, the old saying about how uh, I'll believe it when I see it, well, this is kind of one of those things that you won't see until you believe it first. And uh, if you look at the market movies for the month of June, there's no reason why you shouldn't believe it. But in any event, um, to placate these folks, I am down to nine contracts now, which is the minimum, I think, um, that you can get away with and use three targets on the peeling off strategy. So we're using a three target, nine contract setup today. All right, let's see, we've got our order placed. Let's go ahead and uh, draw the arrow so we know we're in a trade here. And I think we're ready to go. Okay. There's our furthest out target there. Boom. Well, something took off. Um, there was obviously a report here because that was right about 5.30 and that's one of the times when um, there are frequently uh, reports. Uh, I forget what it was today, but it was something bullish apparently. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. Now, notice that we've got some divergence brewing here uh, between price and stochastic. So as soon as, all right, we've got a crossover here. We we're touching the 50% level. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the data feed again make it go a little slower this time and see if I can pause it right when the uh, parabolic flips on the price. I'll just get it up to about 30 or maybe even 20. Because if I crank it up too high it's liable to just drop like a stone and we'll miss our shot to get in. Okay, there it is. Alright, so bearish parabolic crossover here stoke below the 50 percent level and we've got some divergence on the stochastic so that suggests that there will be some actual move here uh, okay so we need to get short And we need to mark our place with the arrow. And start the data. Okay, we are stopped out. Now notice that we're kind of making a one, two, three top here, so we might get another chance to go short. And there it is. Okay, we've got a curve on our blue moving average. We've got the price below all of them. The white looks like it's sloping down pretty good. MACD is, has made a turnaround and is starting to go south of the zero line. And we've got a bearish hook uh, on our 
um, stochastic plus we've got the number one high, the number two low, and then a second high, which we label number three, which did not take out the first high. Charles Dow called this a failure swing. Ken Roberts called it a one, two, three top. And it strongly suggests that this thing's going to keep going lower. So we will mark our entry with the arrow and get short and start the data. Whoa. Okay. Hit them all. That's what we like to see. bottomed out and we're coming back up. All right, now notice that this low is right in the window of opportunity for our projected low for that first turning point. Um, the MACD is climbing up and we've already flipped the parabolic on the uh, stochastic. So I'm going to start the data just a little bit more slowly. I want to get the stochastic above 50 percent. There it is. And we even drop down a little bit with the price so that gives us a good uh, better fill slightly. Okay, so we'll mark our long position here. And normally I don't mark the turning points until the end of the day because if you do, they can kind of get set in stone in your subconscious mind. But this is so obvious that I think it's probably a pretty safe bet here. So let's go ahead and call this what it appears to be, which is our first low turning point. Okay. Oh yeah, we gotta get long, don't we? So let's do that, and away we go. Okay. Up, oh, stopped out. Okay. Well, I'll shrink that little arrow there to show that that trade was very tiny and maybe we'll get another chance to get in. Let's see. Notice that the stoke is above its 50% level. Um, the MACD has not crossed zero and we haven't flipped the parabolic on the price. Um, so I paused it because I'm going to restart the data and not go quite as fast. I think we'll leave it at about 30 not 50 times normal speed. Oh, okay, boom. All right, we've now got the stochastic going higher, apparently. We've got the MACD touching zero, and we flip the parabolic on the price. So I think we can get in again on the long side. Set? I think so. Okay, got a red, white, and blue 
alignment going on there and as soon as we do look how that price takes off okay and our arrow is just about the right length to show that we got all three Now, this is pretty early in the day for this to be a high, but um, who knows? We'll see. We have a potential one, two, three top already here. One, two, three. Now, we flipped the parabolic on the stochastic, um, and we've almost got the red, white, and blue going on here. We've already got the cross on the MACD. So I'm going to start the date again, but I'm going to go a little bit slower until I see the price crossing the red MA. right about there. All right, notice it's dropping. Already have bearish crossover, um, bearish crossover and parabolic flipped. Um, and so we basically have a red, white, and blue here, or pretty darn close to it. Uh, so um, how do we justify this transitional move? Well, like I said, we can make the argument that this is another one, two, three. A one, two, three top. There you go. And all three. I'll notice that our low is right above the projected point for the second uh, delta. But we've already got uh, this low, this high, and this low. So this might end up being a, uh, a four turning point day here. That's one possibility. Let's see. We've got curvature here. We've got this dropping. Um, we're clearly in the direction of the trend here. Can we take another shot at the short side? Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, looks like we did okay there.
Okay, now, blue's above white. We're touching the red here. We've already got a cross on the MACD. We flipped the parabolic on the stochastic and check this out. We've got obvious lower low on the price, but we got higher low on the MACD, and we've also got higher low on the stochastic. So we got a double whammy dose of bullish divergence here. And uh, if you're going to have four turning points, um, usually the, the first low and the last high are close to their projected times, and then you get a larger zigzag in the, uh, in the middle here. So that may be what we have. This could be a high, this could be a low, and now we're going to keep going higher still. Um, to be on the safe side, let's get our stochastic up to the 50% level. If we touch that, um, even if we haven't flipped the parabolic yet, um, we'll take a flyer. But let's see. I'm going to start up the data and go a little bit slower so we don't miss our shot here. We'll get it up to 30 instead of 50. Okay, we're stopped out on that trade, and we flipped the parabolic, and we are touching the 50%. Okay, well, get long. And away we go. Oop, there. <laughs> I was just moving the stop and it moved on its own. Our parabolic is slowly catching up to the stop Well, we're about to be stopped out. We've got a crossover on the MACD. The price has dropped below the red moving average. Um, I might be wrong. Well, let's see. If this was low, high, low, high, yeah, the market could keep moving lower, and my four count would still work. Um, haven't flipped this parabolic, and haven't flipped this parabolic. So, we want to get a little bit further, but I'm going to slow down the data. Okay, we hit the stop. Go to 20 times normal speed, that is. Oh, we have flipped this parabolic. And we are headed straight down, and we already have the MACD crossover. And we haven't got far to go. I'm going to say that we have enough going on. We're underneath the red. We've got blue below white all over the place here. Let's go ahead and see how far this thing is going to go south.
One of the beauties of having a close initial target is that once we hit it and the stop moves automatically, we know we have, okay, we were stopped out. But at least we hit the first target, so we have a minimally profitable trade. All right, let's just see what happens. Okay, things are starting to turn around. Price is coming back up. Got some curvature on the MACD and on the stochastic, so we'll slow down the data feed a teeny bit. Okay, we're back above the red moving average. In fact, we're above the trend defining moving average. Do we have enough room to hit the first target? Let's give it a shot. I didn't take this trade. It's too close to the end of the day. But when we're practicing like this, stopped out. Okay, well, we've got about 15 minutes to go, so let's just turn on the data and run out the clock. Okay, well, we made 4400 bucks with our nine contracts, so not a shabby day in terms of return. We took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trades. Now, um, this was essentially another transitional move. We didn't talk about it at the time, but uh, I think we can make the argument that we had another small but noticeable one to three configuration and if this is a transitional move then maybe we could argue that this is simply a resumption of the trend that we had here with our red white and blue uh, but in any event we're not going to belabor the point but I think as far as the turning points go I labeled this as follows. I've made this high. And we've got this guy here, and we've got this guy here. Now, this is one way to interpret how we turned out. But to be honest with you, we won't know for certain if this is a high until we see what happens on Monday morning. Well, actually, it'll be Tuesday morning because Monday's a holiday. So, 
Uh, I think another possibility is that this is not really there yet. And we have simply a kind of uh, compressed high, low, high, or excuse me, low, high, low situation here. I think that's how I marked it on the turning point chart. Yeah, something like that. So this is by no means solidly uh, a high from which we're going to go lower. So until we see what transpires on Tuesday, we can't really know what today was. So we're going to have to kind of back into uh, an understanding of today uh, once we see Tuesday. But this is basically how the day played out. Not a bad day. And uh, I hope you learned something. And I hope you found it interesting. And come back and see us again next week. Everybody enjoy their Labor Day weekend. Uh, enjoy the end of summer. Stay safe, though.